All right, guys, this is Jesse with Iowa Audio Review. And I got me another Universal Remote to take a look at here. This is the Sofa Baton U1 Universal Bluetooth Remote, or kind of like almost a smart remote now, since you can uh, set it up with your smartphone. And let's see, bring it around here. This does support, the app does support the App Store, the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. You get support for multiple devices. I think you can do up to 15 IR devices, which is your typical uh, remote that you would think of. And then also I think it's, um, I think it can support up to four Bluetooth remotes now. Uh, complete IR code on the cloud. So through the uh, app, you have access to um, Sofa Baton's cloud, which has, I think it says it had 350,000 codes available under 6,000 brands. So it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big library of IR codes. Uh, advanced OLED display, uh, customizable macro keys, customizable uh, remote buttons, and obviously the mobile app. And this was sent to me by Sofa Baton for review, so thank you very much for that. Well, and we'll see how we like it. You get a little user guide here, I guess. Uh, um, it's pretty straightforward and simple. You do get some information here on the back, um, just kind of basic stuff. And then on this side, um, showing you how to put the batteries in, go get the app once you have the app installed. Um, how to connect everything. It's pretty straightforward and then even here if you need help they have they provide you with the uh, email address you can contact there. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's take it out of the case here. I do like how the picture on the box is the uh, actual size. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. I'm zoomed in here so once we get to the cell phone you can read the cell phone screen. And we'll flip it over. They do include batteries, and they include, uh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll say Maxell's a name brand. So you do get good batteries with it, which is nice. Very ergonomic design. It's not huge. Um, you know, got a, a good feel, fits in hand well. You know, uh, you got your channel here, uh, volume up and down, uh, menu, arrows, you know, okay, you know, and then your home and power. And then... Uh, I guess your uh, streaming services, uh, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, and HBO Go or something. Uh, number of buttons down here, which I never use. Maybe you do. And then your basic play, pause, forward, back, record, stop, you know, mute, back. Just It's a very uh, general button layout. Um, and as far as specific extra buttons, you can program those in, which we'll get to. And then up here... You can kind of see my my face. Um, uh, the little scroll wheel, here, scroll wheel uh, allows you to scroll through all your devices. And so instead of having a whole bunch of buttons up here of different devices like a typical uh, universal remote, um, you know, if you have 15 devices saved in this, you can just select them with this little wheel, which I think is an absolutely great idea. Now, I'll just get right to it. The only thing I found that I don't like about this remote is the gloss black front. Um, anything with a lot of finger traffic uh, should never be gloss black. It's just going to show tons of scratches and fingerprints and especially a TV remote. A lot of people, you know, probably eat in their living room now and their hands are greasy and they touch the remote. It's just remotes get dirty. They just do. And, uh, yeah, I would have, I probably would have, if it was me, I would say just make the whole thing out of this uh, matte black finish. Uh, I know the gloss black is makes it look spiffy and stuff, but um, after it's in use, it gets pretty gross and scratched up pretty quickly. Um, other than around the screen, you'd probably have to have a little section, I guess, but still. Um, it, I mean, some people may not care. I'm a little bit more OCD about it, so I figured I'd mention it. So, I think that covers the outside of the remote. There's not a whole lot to go over. It's just a remote. So, let's drop that back in there. And let's let's get into the app. Now, like the app like, like I said, the app you can get from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store and you just go in there, 
search sofa baton and it should come right up you'll see their icon here it's this blue square with the b so before we open that we're gonna go in here and you're gonna want to make sure your bluetooth is on and your location is on first if you don't it'll just tell you to turn it on when you open the app but we're going to turn it on ahead of time we'll go ahead and open the app And it's going to say to push the dash button and the E at the bottom of the remote to connect. So we're going to hold those down. And boom. Successfully connected. And as you can see, the few devices I have added to it are already there. So we'll start with the, I'll just call it the basic menu. We go up to these three dots up here in the corner. And you get an about, which tells you about Sofa Baton. Uh, facts, so if you need help, questions and answers kind of in there. Uh, contact, if you're having trouble, this is really cool actually. If you're having trouble with the remote or something, uh, say you have two, you have missing IR code and other issues. For missing IR code, you can select device type and we'll just go with, uh, say it's a DVD player you have. And you can put in the brand, we'll say... Uh, whatever we'll say integra and then down here you can put other details but when you're done you can even put your email in down here and when you're done you can put in the device brand you just put in integra then in other details maybe you can put in the model number and everything and just say it's not working and then you put in your email address and you hit submit and this will send a message to sofa baton so they can get those ir codes added to their cloud uh, for you and um, if you're just having other issues you just select other issues and then it switches to a message box put in your message you're having issues with your email and hit send and it sends you sends the email to them so like the email I showed you in this pamphlet you know if you want to use your own uh, email service fine but you don't have to because they have it all built right into the uh, contact support in the remote for you which also reminds me that outside of this you can hit this little uh, like uh, warning or error error orange circle up here in the other corner press that and they give you in here it just gives you a little spiel and if you're having issues there's the email address again and the phone number and you know um, if you got got your thing all set up and it's still having issues you can just click submit report and it probably takes a copy of what's saved on the remote and sends it to them so they can check it out, see why it's not working. Or you can call them or use that email address. So let me get out of there, we'll go back. And then settings, you can select your country, which uh, I already did it because I've had this remote for a couple months and been using it, but usually your initial connection, it'll ask you what country you're in. Um, and then light up remote when holding. So that's the, uh, Let's get this stuff out of there. When you uh, set the remote down, uh, after it sits for so long, the screen will shut off. Um, when you pick it up or, you know, touch it at all, this you want the screen to come on. So, And then remote screen brightness, you can go in here. And you can select from high, medium, and low on the brightness of the little screen. Which is nice and then remote timeout how long do you want this screen to stay on you can do five seconds ten seconds or thirty seconds we're just going to do five seconds for now and then if you want you can restore factory settings down there at the bottom and that sums up the main menu so now we'll move on to let's add a device so we'll hit add and if you have some like these devices up here the fire tv roku tv whatever they're, they have them pre-set up up here for you, so, you know, um, we're going to try to do, you can do IR matching mode, IR learning mode, or Bluetooth mode. I can't do the Bluetooth because I don't have any Bluetooth remotes, but from what I read, when you go into the Bluetooth mode, it just pairs with your Bluetooth remote. And then this kind of just takes over your Bluetooth remote. Let's do uh, uh, IR matching mode. We'll go in here, we'll say we're going to add a... TV. We'll go to TV 
and they have a bunch of make and models already listed. I'm assuming these are all popular make and models, but as you get down, I believe it just goes into, uh, yeah, brands. Um, and I just so happen to have a TCL. If you don't want to go through all this, you can just hit the search up here and just type in your make and model. Um, you can do it that way, but well, I have a TCL, so we'll go that way. TCL TV, um, device name, TCL TV is fine. Device icon, um, the picture of the TV is fine. So we'll go next. It says, let's sync the code to your remote and you are ready to rock and roll. Please do not close this window. It's uploading that code list to the remote. Okay, all done. And I guess TCL, in this case, the it didn't uh, have to go through a bunch of other remotes. Uh, some of the other, say like a Sony or TV or something, they have many, road, many remotes have been around a long time. Um, it may have you go through a sequence to figure out exactly which is the correct remote. Um, but in this case for the TCL, we didn't have to do that. And the, uh, this little black, uh, looks like a little door or back arrow. That button's not assigned to anything cause it's still black. So we'll select that, do a reassign key. And then it gives you a bunch of general, uh, options. And we want to make that a back key. So we select back and hit done. And now it's green because I've assigned it something. So that's going to be my back key. Now these uh, streaming service buttons down here at the bottom, didn't, they're not green either. They didn't get assigned for whatever reason. So what we'll do, because uh, I do use those, we're going to take my original little TCL remote here. We're going to point these two at each other like this. And this red one, we're going to select that. We're going to do learn from original remote this time. And it's going to tell you to point the two remotes at each other. It says press and hold the button of the original remote that you want to learn. So in this case, we want this red one that I just selected to be the Netflix. So we're going to push Netflix on here. And you'll see it loading. Learning success. And now that one's blue. And uh, you can see at the bottom, I don't know if you can read it, but green means assigned keys, blue means learned keys, orange is macro keys, and red are Bluetooth keys. And we'll just keep doing the same thing. Now the green one, I want to be Hulu, so we're going to select the green one. Learn from original remote. They're already pointed at each other, so just hold down the green button on here. And there you go. And then say... Hmm. I want this little menu button right here to be uh, the star button here for the uh, bring up the settings on the TV. So we'll do a learn on that one. Hold the button down. And it's learned. And that's it for far as modifying your keys, um, I'll get a few other things added here and then we'll I can show you a macro key. Okay. For a macro, we'll go back into the TCL TV and now in here you can see uh, you can device name, you can go in there, you can change the device name, device con, device icon, you can go in there and change to any of the given icons they give you. Uh, Remote keys, that's how you get in here to modify the remote keys. And then you can also hide from screen. If you select this, it will no longer show up on the screen. And then down here you can do remove device. So we're going to go to remote keys. And let's say uh, we're going to take this master power button up here. And we're going to do edit for macro. So when I push that button...
it's going to turn on the the TV. And then we also are going to select the AV receiver. I added I added my Marantz receiver. And on the AV receiver, we want it to also do power for the AV receiver. So when you hit that button, it's going to turn on the TV, turn on the receiver, and then we'll add another command. And we want on the TCL TV, we want it to hit the red button uh, for Netflix. So, and you could keep adding a couple more commands, but basically you get home, you could push just this one button. It's going to turn the TV on, turn the stereo on and go to Netflix. Hold one button push. And you could do the same thing. If you have a couple of components, you know, you could program them. So you hit one power button and it turns them all on, turns them all off. Um, you know, you'd have a macro to turn everything on and a macro to turn everything off. So that's really, really handy. So let's go back here now. I don't need to save it. Let's go back. And at this screen, now that I have more than one device, this little three little bars up here, you can hit this. And it gives you a little, changes little indicator here. It allows you to change the order. And when you change that order, it changes on here as well. So don't worry about which order you add them to your phone or whatever. And once they're on there, you can go in here and just move them around however you want them. So I think that pretty much covers all the options with this. There might be a few little things, um, other things you can do, but basically the the app on the Android store doesn't have a very good review, but I'm not sure why, because I've tried this. This is an old Moto X from like 2013. Um, I tried it with my Galaxy S9, the wife's uh, Galaxy S10. Uh, we have an old... S3 uh, and an LG G3 and our Samsung 10.1 tab and it's worked just the apps work perfectly fine on all these different devices old and new so I'm not sure what's going on there because I have not had any issues um, with the app um, and uh, as far as the remote responding to the app everything I do um, at most like if you add some stuff and it doesn't show up on the list in here or it doesn't um, sometimes you might just have to uh, close out of it. So we'll go in here. We'll close it. But as long as the remote stays within range, the Bluetooth range of the phone, when you go back in and it reloads, you shouldn't have to repair. Well, in this type of case, <laughs> oh, nope, it did it on its own. It just took it a second. It automatically repaired on its own. The only time you have to repair, like many other Bluetooth, Bluetooth devices, is if you leave the range and then come back in. But yeah, if you stay within range, uh, it will reconnect automatically. And then a lot of times um, your devices will show up. Um, I had one instance where I added a bunch and a couple of them showed up. And then the last one wasn't showing up. It showed up on here, but it wasn't showing up on here. So I just closed the app, reopened it, and it was there. And that was really the only issue I've had. Um, I've been able to add, let's see... We can do, if you want to add a remote that's possibly not on the list, I think you can do IR learning mode. And I have this SMSL remote for a DAC. Let's see. Please locate the original remote and point it towards the U1. So we got them, got them pointed at each other here. So we'll hit next. And let's select the first button we want to use. We want to do this button right here. Press and hold on the original remote. So do that. Okay, that button's programmed. And like this button up here, I don't want it to do anything in this case. So you can select it. Oh, no. Oh, well, I'll show you that in a second. And then um, we'll do volume. I want volume up. So we'll press and hold. Volume up, and then we'll do volume down. Okay, and then let's see. Let's do the function button here. I want the want the. We'll just make this one the function button. Just program that, and then here's a mute button. And then I also have a mute button on here, so we'll do the mute button. 
and this looks like a back button and uh, so does that I guess sure we'll make we'll make both these back buttons there it goes whoop I let off the key yeah, sometimes if it don't take right away just give it a second and then start again there you go oh what else and for the OK button, I want to sit OK, and there's an OK on here, so then I'll press it on here. There it goes. And OK, I got all the buttons I need off this remote done, so now we'll hit Next. And Device Name. So we got to select up here. We'll just do SMSL. That's good enough. We'll hit Done. And then device icon, we'll select this little thing. It looks like a DAC kind of here. And then we'll hit next. And everything, we've got all my buttons I want selected from the original remote program to this remote. And then we hit done. And there it is. There's my SML. Now I have, even though this is not anywhere in the database, so if you do the... Uh, if you do the uh, IR matching, it doesn't work that way because it's not in there. You're not going to find it. So if you just do the uh, the IR learning mode, you can add any remote you want pretty much. I, uh, I have a little Emotiva remote for my Emotiva system. Whoops. <laughs> for my Emotiva system. That remote's not in their system, but I use it a lot, and I was able to add it to, the, uh, to this remote the same way. So I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, if you have any questions about the remote uh, or having issues, can't get some added, you know, put it down in the comments. I'll see if I can figure it out. If not, I've, I've had no problems with communications with them. They've been very helpful uh, anytime I've needed to communicate with them. And uh, I just haven't had any issues with really the remote at all. Like I said, I installed the app. I've, you know, read the manual a little bit, but most of the stuff's pretty intuitive. It's pretty easy to figure out. And for me, it's all just worked, which is what I was looking for in the first place, unlike another remote I reviewed. So thank you again, Sofa Baton, for sending this to me. I will uh, have this thing loaded up with a bunch of uh, different uh, devices that I can uh, I have. And that, like I'm not going to be using this in my living room to control that. The reason I wanted something like this is bringing... Uh, I have a lot of audio gear coming and going uh, that... I mess with and test and repair and a lot of times it's used and it's missing its remote and um, sometimes having all these remotes around is just annoying so it's it's just easier to uh, go th do this real quick if it's going to be something I'm going to have around for a couple months and program it in and then I can just have all of the stuff I'm working on at the moment programmed in here instead of having five, six, seven remotes around at times. So anyway, thanks again Sofa Patan. I hope everybody enjoyed this video. If you liked it, like it, whatever, uh, please leave any comments down below and have a good day.